Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Weezcast. I'm your host, Aiden Morton, with co-host Caleb Chassis and co-host Stephen Prindler and special guest Michael Harbin. Today, we have listened to the first of Weezer's four-part series, Seasons, that came out last year, uh, which is Spring. And uh, so we just listened to that. Spring is the first of the four. The uh, the sticker on the vinyl when I picked it out, I really liked that it had like a lot of records. They'll have their genre on them, and it said Elfcore era with a question mark <laughs> on that copy. Uh, so for the season series, what they did was they wanted to kind of not like capture the vibe of each season, but also they wanted to have like other additional vibes. So obviously spring, like they put in a lot of Celtic vibes, a lot of hippie vibes. So like the lyrics kind of. Uh, they kind of like go along that way. They're not kind of typical to Weezer, uh, but they keep a lot of their. They stay true to their style, but they really blend it a lot. And I think with this album, they did a good job. I think we're going to be using the word vibes a lot. We are probably. <laughs> so opening night, Caleb, would you care to start us off with opening night? Uh, sure. Um, I will open it by saying, "Happy start." Uh, the song is so fun, and it's just a bop. Uh, I like how uh, it's like kind of like an old Watts kind of the style of it with mixed with like some drums and that uh, it talks a lot about historical people or random uh, famous people and yeah soul is pretty generic but okay it's a fun song did anybody notice although I feel like you and you probably know this but did anybody notice the uh, the sampling from the four seasons it's like an old i can't remember who does it but it's the like Baldi. a Baldi. yes yeah. did you notice that that it uh, used that it used a dun, 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 i did not know dun, 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 for the verses like the pan flute in it but i didn't realize that's that i, I didn't even that. realize for the longest time too and I've, I've heard that so many times but i didn't realize that like whenever he's singing that like the the melody of his singing is actually that and there's a, a couple points in the other seasons albums too where he takes things from the four seasons and uh, blends them in there. He does it in almost every season. So, so I thought that was, I thought That's that true. was pretty cool. Um, I only knew that for this song. I think I absolutely love to. I don't know why. When he says "We lay down in the grass," I just every time I'm gonna I see grass, I think of that. Chills. Yeah, <laughs> he, he says it all the time. <laughs> yeah, like honestly, I always ask Caleb. Caleb, what do we do? Lay down in the grass. That's right. Um, and I feel like the song is basically an ode to Shakespeare. I know Rivers really liked Shakespeare. He used to like put out, uh, if, if he was like in an area seeing Shakespeare, he would kind of, he had some sort of a way back then of like letting fans know that he was in the area and he would just buy tickets for Shakespeare plays and then just bring a whole bunch of fans that he doesn't even know to watch it. And he'd pay for all their tickets. Um, and the solo just absolutely slaps. I love the solo in this song. Just going from the, uh, how do you say his name? Vernal? Vivaldi. Vivaldi? From the Vivaldi. Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> from the Vivaldi into the into the, the classic Blue album, Chugging on the Guitar, and how it just meshes so well. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love this song. It, it's it's a little bit cheesy with some of the lyrics uh, and the, like, the repetition of some of them. Like, we lay down in the grass, we lay down in the grass. It's kind of like a weird lyric. It's like who would who would say that or even just Shakespeare <laughs> makes me happy like a lot of people made him happy in that song yeah he, so he listed off several people that made him happy Henry the fourth part one yeah yeah but it's all Shakespeare related I think I well, think it's all like stuff he, he from gets the most place. credit but so. but uh I'm curious you're a, you're a Weezer expert not a Shakespeare expert so true I'll give you a pass <laughs> so Michael what do you think of okay, uh, I this didn't, song? I didn't have a lot of notes written down, but uh, I put, like, the pan flute in it kind of threw me off at first because I wasn't, I was like, this doesn't sound like Weezer to me. But um, <laughs> then they r rocked in with the guitars, so I, you know, it redeemed itself a little bit. Um, I kind of thought the switching between those two was really cool. And then um, I just thought it was an overall banger intro song. Like, you know, really sets the tone for the album. Um, yeah, it reminded, it, it made me think of, we, I do, I do this Shakespeare in the park with my siblings and some of our friends oh, really? every year, and 
So then when I heard the song and he was talking all about that and like the pan flute and everything just made me like think of being there. So yeah. Cool. Good song. I gave it a, a 3.8 out of 5. Oh, did you rate like you the songs? every song? I thought I was supposed to. Oh, oh no, no, no. We just rate the album. <laughs> Wait, how, how much did you rate it though? 3.8. 3. 3. Oh, that's pretty good. But yeah, we just do an overall, like rating for the gotcha. entire album at the end. I mean, I've got a like, rating for each definitely one. Definitely tell us your rating. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, welcome to share them. <laughs> okay, but share so them cool. after your opinion, because I, I want to be on Man. the edge of my seat waiting for it, for that rating. <laughs> okay. Stephen, uh, what did you think of opening night? Um, I remember the first time I heard the song when it first came out, and uh, my first thought was, oh, this is that classical piece. Um, that's kind of weird. And then he was singing to it. I'm like, this is really odd. And I don't know if I like it. But then I was like, you know, kind of bopping my head. I'm like, yeah, like, it's fun. It's just weird. <laughs> but, you know, it's a good song. It's, it's like, and it's very, you know, definitely fits the vibe of spring. And just, I don't know what that, uh, like, instrument ensemble is called. But yeah. It's, well, like, it I think there's a lot of mandolin well. and stuff. In yeah. It. A lot of wind instruments. Little string plucking and flute blowing, whatever. Classic <laughs> spring instruments. Yeah. 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 Cool, cool, cool. Angels on vacation. Stephen, would you like to start that one off? Sure. Um, I like this song because it's like, it's fun and it's rebellious. It's like, yeah, we're, we're going, like, angels on vacation is kind of like a metaphor for just, because uh, he says, like, take your halos off, put your hoodie on. It's like we're just gonna go have some fun and do what we want um so it's fun but at the same time i i kind of resent the message because it's saying like being good is just like boring and stiff and like you know god doesn't understand you know what fun is and what it's like to actually go out and party it's like that's not how it is in real life like yeah. god invented fun and you can have a lot of fun and not be bad like <laughs> you know like sometimes breaking the rules is fun but only certain rules that are okay to break, you know? <laughs> so, like, so I kind of have mixed feelings about it, but... Uh, That's fair. You know, just viewing it with, like, a more kind of a, a positive perspective and mindset about it is, like, I like it. Yeah. What do you think, Michael? I, uh, I'm going to be honest, I was, like, really stressed out trying to write down a definition, so I kind of missed the part of the whole meaning of the song. <laughs> That's okay. Um... I locked onto the vacation part, though, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> so I found, like, the, the breakdown of the song, like, right near the end. Uh, the bridge like, where it kind of, like, slows down yeah, yeah, yeah. and gets softer. Feels like like the last, like, two days of, like, a week's vacation where you're, like, depressed that it's ending. <laughs> and then, like, the build-up at the end is the last day of vacation where you're like, well, may as well live it up for the last day. That's kind of my takeaway from the song. That's a very good analogy for that. <laughs> that's really all I wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I gave it a four out of five, though. Oh, wow. We, Even better than the opening sound, night. The sound of it was very... I, I enjoyed the sound of it a lot. Uh, so I love the guitar in the beginning with the... Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I also like the piano and the bass and the bridge combining. If somehow it sounds really good together. And I love... Uh, well, the, it was a cool solo at the end. I don't have much to say about it. Yeah. It's very well mixed. Like, this whole album, especially for being something that's kind of like a side project... It was like they they did put this together pretty quickly for each of the seasons, um, but like I feel like the end result was really good, really really well mixed, especially for how many different instruments are in it, uh, with like having all the wind instruments and, and uh, mandolins and stuff. The way that the song starts with the choir is kind of like, okay, this is a different vibe from opening night. Okay, where are we going? And then like Caleb said, when that guitar comes in, it's very I it's very very similar to troublemaker from the red album yeah i think you can get it's the like they up. they almost like they almost ripped themselves off by like using something really similar to one of their other songs it's, but it sounds amazing it's, which itself is very similar to the good life from i Parker was about to say that <laughs> it's like they took the good life made well, it, it to guys, it sounds so good it sounds kind of familiar but let's do it <laughs> <laughs> so uh i do uh i do love that from the choir vocals into the electric guitar and the uh, the blend of styles in there is really well done again. Musically amazing, lyrically kind of stupid. I have similar notes to what Stephen <laughs> said. Angels taking a break from heaven because it seems so dull. No need for Dead Sea Scrolls, like that line. I think they're basically saying like we don't need the words of the Bible. 
uh, and the big man wouldn't understand because, yeah, they want to go have fun, but it's like they're sneaking out to go have fun. And so, like, the lyrics are... I think they're more stupid than anything, but holy crap, what a banger. I love this song. <laughs> it's like, you have to, for I think most of this album, you kind of have to take a step back from the lyrics and, and appreciate like what it is and what it was written for and take it, if you take it for what it is, it's amazing. But if you're like, oh, whoa, these lyrics don't sound very Christian. I don't, <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Then, uh, then you're not going to like it. If you don't like it, you won't like it. If but, you don't like it, you'll love it. But you don't love it. <laughs> but everybody, everybody gave their opinion on that one, right? Yeah. We didn't miss it. anybody. All right, Michael. A little bit of love. What oh, do you think? Okay, I didn't want to go first for this. You one, don't. You, we can but, go back to you. Well, no, I'll, I'll do it anyway. Okay. Um, I didn't like this one. I'll be honest. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was like a fun song, kind of catchy, but I just thought it was like the cheesiest cheesiest thing i've ever heard okay i'll be honest yeah um i just wrote down y'all need jesus because <laughs> it was like the most shallow sounding love everybody you know maybe not the most shallow sounding song i've ever heard but i just found it a bit i can respect that a bit lacking can i you know? next yeah um <laughs> yeah just the token like love each other message you know that i feel like i've heard so many other places fair enough Steven, do you That's have a hilarious because I have like the opposite. Yeah, I have a rebuttal. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, not that I disagree with you because I, mm -hmm. I understand where you're coming from. But at the same time, like, love everybody is like the central message of the Bible. Yes. It's like you could say it's shallow because as Christians we're so used to hearing it and it's like, okay, yeah, I get it. But at the same time, it's like, how do we actually do that though? Like, especially in a conservative Christian circles, we tend to focus more on like condemning and like. Right. We don't spend a lot of time actually loving people, and it's like I think that's a message that we need to actually live out more. Okay, but it also <laughs> like it it acknowledged. I don't know where in the lyrics it said, but basically it was like everybody thinks they're like you know everybody's down, everybody's depressed, pretty much. Yeah, it's a so I think just spread love, lost or something. Yeah, some people which hide like it, some people show it isn't true. It's like no, it's not. But what he's saying, like there's there is a truth to what he's saying. We're like we're all trying to make our way through life and nobody's perfect right and like sometimes you know we put on a good show and like we're doing great when we're not and sometimes you're just like no nah, i'm doing terrible but, fair enough yeah and no matter what like a little bit of love does go a really long way and it's true like if okay. we if we you know love people and like just show basic kindness to people it actually makes a big difference to a lot of people and uh yeah so i also love the song like i think it just sounds really good yeah, I thought. I mean, I thought it was a fun, catchy song, but I respect I your opinion. By the I do respect your opinion as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's a fair way. opinion. But I don't. That was. Just, it's funny that how it like resonated completely right. opposite with <laughs> the two of us. I'm like, man, this song is so great and deep, and you're like, so shallow and cheesy. And that's what we want to hear. Boring. <laughs> that's what we want on Wee's cast. We want a variety. <laughs> we want disagreement. We want Stevens wrong. <laughs> we want discourse. <laughs> Caleb, uh, what do you think of this song? Uh, I liked oh, the, uh, the intro. I loved it a little bit. Um, <laughs> you loved it a wow. little bit. I'm Knee kidding. slapper right there. Uh, I just want to use that line. Uh, yeah, I, I like the intro. Fun song. Vocals are pretty good. Uh, Weezer likes Nirvana, obviously, and I love the end of the song. It just, uh, stops. It doesn't just fade out or anything. It just stops completely. So that was, that was pretty cool. Okay. That's it? Yeah. Okay. A Little Bit of Love is the first song that that they uh, did. Obviously, as a, this is the only single from this EP or album. And when they announced Seasons, Rivers posted a video and it had the line to the, where he says, take a look at where you started from and where you are today. And it had a picture of him and his wife many, many years ago when they had first met. And then a picture of them old and kind of gray haired now, how they are. And it was really, really cute. And I thought, that is so nice. I really, really liked it. And it made me excited for the song. And then uh, the song, how it starts out, it's just got that, I think it's harmonica at the beginning in there. Yeah, it is. Sounds and good. it sounds cool. It just sounds fresh. It, it, it sounds like waking up on a spring morning. And it's so refreshing. And then the lyrics, I loved the lyrics at the beginning of the song. 
And I love the take a look where you started from and where you are today. You climbed mountains, swam oceans, you got got knocked down and kept going. I really, really like those lyrics. I think they're very beautiful. I think they're very meaningful to me. And I think they're very reflective because I think when it came out too, um, I had recently been through a difficult time. And I don't know, it's like almost like a, a little pat on a little pat on your own back listening to it like wow yeah look look at all the stuff i've been through and i've kept on going although for me it's because of god keeping me going i didn't do it on my own but those lyrics hit me in the feels and then also following that all your wounds are healing fine i'm so glad i got you in my life that's a, a line too that just makes me think of like how my wounds have healed and how thankful i am for the people in my life um and then verse two feels like a throwaway it feels like rivers was like He's writing on his notepad. It's just like flames. It's just going. He's going. And then he and then he took a break because he had to use the washroom. And he came back and he's like, huh. A rabbit's foot? Okay, that's... Yeah, yeah hold on to that. Uh, uh, and I don't know. It just... The lyrics are really hokey and weak. So I feel like he put all the... Usually songs will be the other way where it starts out a little lighthearted and then gets more serious. But this one is like... Really, really beautiful lyrics at the start, and then it's like... Hokey and weak. Yeah, hokey, hokey and weak. Perfect. I don't feel like it ruins the song by having the hokey and weak lyrics. I just think it, it makes me excited to get back to the chorus again. Like, I just usually kind of stop singing along for verse two. Because <laughs> um, I didn't know what the words were. And then once I did know what they were, I'm like, eh. But great song. I love, I love, love, love that song. But there's a song that is next that when it came out... I absolutely friggin' hated. I hated this song so much, and Stephen loved it, right? Mm -hmm. And he would sing, just like Adam and Eve, just like <laughs> Adam and Eve, just like Adam and Eve. In the Garden of Eden? That's right. And I just think, I do still think to this day that the way he says that, and he says that line over so and over again, it's annoying and it's hokey. The song's grown on me, though. It's a great vibe. It's a great vibey song. The lyrics are dumb. They're dumb as crap, I but like up to five it's now. it's worse than screams. I got like, oh. the amount of times he said vibe already. <laughs> I got access. I got access to all of the demos from all of the seasons, and this song has the most demos out of any Weezer song I've heard. Like I've heard a lot of Weezer demos, and this one they workshopped so much because that part the garden or sorry just like adam and eve like adam and eve there was a whole bunch of different versions and like one of them was like a beach or something just just like a day at the beach yeah. like a day at the beach and one of them was like just like we're in new york just like we're in new york <laughs> there's all these stupid different versions and i'm like man i thought just like adam and, adam and eve was bad but all the demo <laughs> versions are way 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 worse so it gave me more of an appreciation <laughs> now i love this song um yeah, that's really all, all I have to say. Lots of the lyrics are stupid, but it, it overall, lyrically and musically, fits the vibe of the album. So uh, I don't I don't fault it for that. Michael? Um, the only thing I really wrote about this was that it sounds like they wrote the song without reading Genesis first, because it sounds like they don't really know what the Garden of Eden looks like, <laughs> or was like at all. So, um, yeah. I also found that very annoying, the Just Like Adam and Eve part. Very cheese grater on the on the nerves type of thing. Yeah. But, um, overall a decent song. Very, like, springy, uplifting, you know, kind of, kind of musical aspect to it. But, I don't know. It was just okay. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Not bad. Caleb? Um, chill song. Uh, I don't have much to say about it. What I will say, for a while I didn't like it, and then for a while I did like it. And then I kind of, right now, it's just kind of like, I can tolerate it. It's chill. I can I don't tolerate know. it. It's so good to hear. I love tolerating music. <laughs> you, can you tolerate the sound of drums? I We're love. not there yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, no, no. <laughs> Let Steven speak. I'm used to, I'm used to well, going. This is my favorite one. I'm used to going last, kind of. Oh, so it is. Why. We'll no go. joke. This in is my, your favorite one. In Sound my opinion, drums. this is one of Weezer's best songs of all time. Okay, we're gonna get to it. But <laughs> wait, ironically. you're talking about Santa Drum, right? No, I'm talking about the Garden of Eden. 
Weezcast is canceled. <laughs> it's canceled. We're done. Steven's kicked off the show. I love this song so much. Like, when I first put it on, when it first came out, all the songs were like, okay, this is pretty good. Yep. And then this song came on, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. This is amazing. I downloaded it right away. First song in this album I downloaded. <laughs> Maybe even the first Weezer song I don't, I don't remember. But, no, it's like, it's just musically perfect. Lyrically, it's okay. It's it's about like falling in love and whatever, but like <laughs> it's just so groovy. It's like, yeah, it just makes me want to dance and like, I don't know, you know. It's 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 just the vibe <laughs> is perfect. <laughs> right. We should have an, a, the best Weezer song ever, though. One of the best. That's the, the one of the biggest stretch. Man, it's it's just down there. It's up there. <clears throat> it's okay. I can respect it's out. It's yeah. okay. that. Yeah, you have a lot of opinions that I just can't. <laughs> I can't even fathom. That's almost there, but I, I'll allow it. Well, I mean, you're right about it being better than one thing. Never mind. Okay, you know what? We, the Garden of Eden is like a representation of heaven, right? When we go to heaven, it will be like the Garden of Eden, just like so Adam and Eve. Not like that exactly, song, just like Adam and Eve. We'll all be strumming guitars. And we'll probably hear the sound of drums. <laughs> wow. We should have an epic way to write into that. How can anyone be playing drums if we're all strumming guitars? You gotta have a drummer. We we should have an episode where we compare uh, this song, records, what happens after you and Deep and Dream Like all sleep. the singles? All the, yeah, basically. Oh. Or all the really main ones. All the really main ones, eh? Yeah. The sound of drums. I'll start it. It's a feel-good song about reuniting with friends and celebrating in song. Uh, another really good one for the mix of styles. The electric guitar sounds like something off of Blue Album, uh, and it blends so well with the Celtic vibes. The solo is very cool. Did you not like the song when it first came out? Sound of Drums wasn't one of my favorites, but like I never disliked it. Oh, okay. I don't think I disliked any on this album other than The Garden of Eden, but now I like it, so it's all good. <laughs> um, Caleb, what do you think of Sound of Drums? Uh, I find the chorus is re- uh, done really well, and especially when he says like the line, the sound of drums, and it, like everything stops. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, and I never noticed the lines at the end where like they're just talking while the song's ending. But uh, uh, oh, the chanting. Uh, yeah, I haven't. It's like a whisper chant. Oh yeah, I think I did. But I've never heard that before, so I wonder if it's like an extra thing or I don't know. I think it's always been there. Michael, I, I, I feel like with every one of these songs, I can't even give it a full proper musical eva- evaluation because it's like the first time I've heard it. But um, this one, right off the bat, really liked. Um, it feels like to me going home for the summer after like a school year, um, specifically like my first summer after college going home. It's like it felt like that small town summer reuniting again, like. You know, just everything's back to like the the usual routine and everything. Um, yeah, so it kind of felt like like a moment stuck in time almost. Um, but I found the whispering really un- unnerving. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> yeah, enjoy it at all. That's fair. I didn't really like the whispering either. At the very end, I was like, oh, didn't like how they ended that. But um. <laughs> the only one that has a pass is when Pat is record recording and there's copyright. Never mind. It's a Van Weezer reference. Yeah. Gotcha. Anyway. What's my turn? Oh, are you done? It was 3.6 out of 5 for me. Okay. Pretty good song. Okay. Um, this one is definitely one of my least favorites on the album. Um, but it's not bad. I like that it's so unique. Like, I've never heard a song that sounds anything like this. It's just... It's different. So I like that about it, but I don't know if I like it, like, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't want other songs to be like it, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like that this song exists, but I also, I like that it's not normal. <laughs> like, I wouldn't want all songs to sound like that. Um, yeah, like, it's, it's, really it exists for the vibe. Very hippie, like, all the, like... 
spring. Yeah. I, I used to think it sounded like a tribal jungle village song. But uh, uh, yeah, other than that, I don't even know really the lyrics. Yeah, it's good to see my old friends. It's been so long. The lyrics are pretty good. Um, but he does say like in the first verse, he talks about how it's like, um, you feel all depressed and worn out after the sad events some call Holy Week. I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I think that lyric, he's, it's supposed to be, because it's supposed to be in the era of, like, um, when, like, the crucifixion. Like, I think whenever he talks about Holy Week, I think he's saying everybody's sad because of the crucifixion. I don't think so. Because that's it what Holy Week it, is. Yeah, but it wasn't called Holy Week at the time. <laughs> that it actually happened well he knows now i don't know that's that's what i looked up like what holy week was yeah or in reference to what that would be well it makes more sense if it was like in more medieval times where you know the world was run by the catholic church and the church was very burdensome so holy week would probably be like a time of fasting and suffering <laughs> holy week was not a time of fasting and suffering if you were PK. Well, <laughs> Holy Week, man. You went with your dad every every day to the little noonday sermon and had crappy, like, tuna sandwiches afterward. That sounds like suffering to me. I did immediately think of that when he said Holy Week, but I oh, didn't really? write it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, you're right. It totally was suffering. It wasn't fasting. <laughs> well, kind of. We didn't huh? like to eat them. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so suffering I or suppose. fasting? Both. Fasting and suffering. We were suffering because we had to smell them, but not eat them. You gotta wow. give him some love. All the love. All of this love? Oh. Yeah. Steven, you wanna start off with <laughs> all this love? Say, <laughs> sure. The cheesier the better here on Wee's right. Cast. <clears throat> um, I didn't write down very much. I just wrote weird song, but it sounds pretty nice. <clears throat> it's like, the lyrics are just kind of weird. Um, but it's got like a good build up. Uh, for the chorus, if I'm thinking of the right song. Oh, this love. Yeah, where he goes like, ay, 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 And you're like, okay, we're going in the chorus. And like, ding, 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 ding. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's like weird and quirky, but it's fun. Like the rest of the album, you know. I'm trying to resist the urge to say vibe. <laughs> you can say vibe, it's fine. <laughs> but like, like, he's eight counting. and nine. <laughs> vibe oh, no. Hey, that's 10. <laughs> okay. It's got um, a very happy vibe. 11. I had <laughs> I had written down, it was a very cute and fun song. I liked the, the idea of the song overall. Um, but the chorus just, like, didn't sit well with me. Because I don't know what, like, the, the, the melody of it, like, was just unsettling to me. Like, it didn't build in the, in the way that was pleasing to my brain, you know? Mm. Interesting. I can't, like, unless we're playing it right now, I couldn't really show it to you but that sounds like Pinkerton to me the, Pinkerton's um, Weezer's second, second oh okay oh, like, I feel like they do that a lot in Pinkerton where the song will just like be kind of not pleasing to your brain <laughs> like the chord progression like just falling it, like, for progresses you. in a way that yes. I didn't enjoy okay um and then the last the last one though where it's like the key change um I like that one and they really like nailed it home although I wish they had built it up a little bit more Maybe not just with the I, I, I's. Yeah. I, I, I's only go so yeah. far. Like musically just like built it up a little bit more and then really nailed it home. But, oh well. I gave it a, a 3.5 out of 5 again. I feel like all, all my ratings have been pretty tough so far. Wow, that's not bad. Anything over a 3 is pretty fair. A lot of the songs are similar in ways, so it's tough to say, but I feel like this might be my favorite. I'm not sure though, but I feel like it might be. Hmm. Uh, I love the music and the vocals. It's su such a fun song, and the guitar and the and the in the course rapidly playing is really cool. And the piano. Wow. Okay, I wanted to go last for this one because I didn't know if anybody else would would address the lyrics more. So, um, I would interpret this song as a post-COVID comeback, uh, but using a lot of metaphors. I mean, he flat out says like, "I forgot how to love how to." laugh how to sing with a mask on my mouth and this is the first thing they released after and COVID kind of frigged up their like hella mega tour with Green Day and Fall Out Boy 
Uh, so that kind of like created a shift with when their albums came out and everything because of the tour and all that. And then they're coming out with seasons and, uh, it's like, it's, it's kind of keeping the freshness of it being spring, but it's also the freshness of like the excitement of being able to go back on tour again, the excitement of releasing new music. Um, and I think that's kind of like the general theme of the song. Uh, and he's excited to share cause it's like, it's like that feeling of all that love and all of the things that he loves to do being kept inside and now he can let all that love out he can go on tour he can sing for people um he can sing in the city he can sing across the meadows <laughs> way into that. across the meadows <laughs> is a vinyl exclusive song <clears throat> it is not on spotify caleb you want to start this one off i actually really really like this one uh was this your first time hearing it no but this is the first time I actually heard it and actually liked it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's well composed, especially for an extra hidden song, because usually they're not composed well, or they're decent, but... What's this not composed whoa, whoa, well? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, You're saying wait. extra songs are not well written? No, I'm saying how they're composed together. Like how it fits in with the rest of the album. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. that's not what I'm saying. Um, that That's just how it is for Weezer. Like That's an extra song, it. hidden song, usually is a little bit more sloppy with the way that they put it together. Right, sometimes. So, uh, but sometimes. this one was actually put together really well. Um, so well they stuck it right in the middle. <laughs> this should be on the album. <laughs> this should be an actual song on the album. It's good enough to be one. I agree. Yeah. Let's hear more about that, Steven. Uh, okay, well this is my first time hearing the song. And I thought, dang, this song's really good. Like... It wasn't as musically enjoyable for me as some of the other ones, but I found the lyrics, uh, like, very uh, good. It's like he's singing he's singing about how, uh, like, someone, how beautiful he sees them as. But not just that, he's saying, like, you are going to see yourself this way as well. And he's not just saying, like, um, like I hope you do. He's saying, like, yeah, you definitely will. You just need some time and, like, be patient with yourself. And you'll see how great you are because he says, I'm like, uh, I assume it's a she, but it could be a guy, I guess. Says <laughs> You're so beautiful. They, them. You're so beautiful. He says they are, <laughs> are, uh, oh, no. like, uh, well, what is the word he used? Like self, self-conscious or it wasn't quite self-conscious, <laughs> but it was like shy and like, uh, you know, not like confident in themselves. So he was like saying like someday you're going to see, you know, the way I see you, you're so beautiful and mm-hmm. great. So, I don't know, it's just really hopeful and, like, really sweet. And the bridge is just, like, saying you're beautiful. So, it, it's cool. Cool. Michael? Yeah, I just thought the lyrics were really cute for the song. And I thought the guitar riff, like, leading up to the bridge was really, really cool. Like, the the little, I, I don't know if it was a solo or not, but the little just guitar part right before the bridge. The little lead there? Yeah. Cool. We uh, have a whole lot to say about this one, though. I mostly had s- the same stuff to say as Steven. <clears throat> about the like you will love yourself as much as I love you so right now give yourself a little time it's like be patient with yourself you're a work in progress you'll get there you'll have an appreciation for yourself like I do basically yeah basically what Steven said it's a nice song of encouragement to a friend who needs it and the tune is very similar to fake smiles and nervous laughter which is a track on the deluxe edition of the white album I think that they have oh, very yeah, similar that. they have very similar melodies <clears throat> Um, but Weezer, uh, kind of copying their own songs is not, not a new, a new thing that we've seen. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's right. The (laughs) Weezer motto. Um, so the next song, Wild at Heart, I don't have a good segue for it. I will start it off though. The beginning is hype, but it sounds kind of sloppy. It kind of reminds me of when I started learning guitar and learned power chords and I just pick up the guitar and just like start wailing away on the guitar and they're playing like abrupt and then just kind of moving around like i don't know it's it's fun but it's sloppy so i feel like it kind of it's almost like the song's tripping to start um yeah i I noticed that but like i i don't i don't really have anything to say about the lyrics like it's an okay song it's definitely not one of the better ones but it's it it, like it kind of sounds hype at the start but i don't know i guess as far as finishers 
Well, I think on all of the seasons, I think that the deluxe tracks, they didn't just tag it on to the end because they chose their end songs for a reason. So I think this one, though, Across the Meadows would have done good to be the last song on the album. They would have did that. But Caleb, uh, what did you think of Wild at Heart? Uh, I love the way the chorus is unique uh, comparing to the verses. Uh, also, the verses are fun. And I love the bridge solo. And then also at the end when the song is ending and it's like abrupt hitting on the guitar. That was pretty nice. Yep. Steven? Um, <clears throat> I do like this song. I like, um, it's unique. A lot of Weezer songs are unique. But uh, when they go into the chorus, it slows right down. And like, um, it almost like cuts out the instrument when he says wild at heart. It's just like playing just the notes that he's saying. And then you've got me, and it builds up, and then the drums come in. And it's like boom, boom, psh, boom, boom, as he says it again. <laughs> so I really like that, where it's like slows right down, and then builds up and goes into it again. It's like, oh man, that sounds really good. Um, as for the lyrics, uh, I forget what I wrote now. Oh yeah, um, saying he's you've got me wild at heart. So he's like impassioned, and uh, the part where he says turning this old lullaby into a uh, my own battle cry like it sounds like it's really like inspiring like yeah you're waking up and like uh you know taking life with stride so it's it's kind of like a cool like motivating song in a way and uh the ending oh my gosh if only they made the ending into like a complete full solo because it's so good it sounds like it could yes. be in like this is what I had written down too. Oh my gosh, it's like why why do you stop there? It just started getting good. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it was just getting to its peak and then it stops. So yep. disappointment there, but also like potential. Totally. I uh what Steven was saying about like the the wild at heart part where they like really slow it down and start banging on the drums. I love that part. But like like the ending really if they had just stepped it up a notch and really kind of gone crazy at the ending you know like they did at the beginning um i think it would have been a much better end to the album but overall it was a decent closer song um and i think musically it just kind of sounded like a queen song a little bit to me huh. like in parts i don't know that's just that's the vibe i got from it was that thir 12 13 you said vibe <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I stopped counting. Um, I think it, I, I think it is thirteen. Yours was thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're canceling that word from the rest of the show. Um, yeah. Good end to the album, but it definitely could have been a bit more powerful. I think. All right. A bit more wild at heart, if you will. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> so, we're gonna move into our overall uh, album thoughts. And ratings. I will start us off. I'm really proud of mine because I wrote it like it would be something at the beginning of a Rolling Stones article. Actually, <laughs> Rolling Stones would never praise Weezer so highly, probably, but <clears throat> I wrote Chalked with killer solos and a combination of goofy and meaningful lyrics, Spring does a great job portraying spring vibes. 4.4 out of 5 stars. 14. Caleb? Uh, I wrote fun. Uh, wow! <laughs> wow! That's great. Okay, so here's the thing. I said it better myself. Is, it's it's a it's a pretty good album. I mean, Weezer has better albums, but uh, only a couple. Pacific Daydream. <laughs> what? Actually, I feel like I yeah I would prefer that actually. Really? Um, it's top tier work. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so it's pretty good. I don't have any hate against it, but. To say it's up there, I don't know about that. I think Autumn is up there, but not Spring. Uh, we'll get to that later in another episode, but I would say 3.8. Okay. What was your rating? 4.4. 4.4, okay. It's my turn? Yes, sir. Best for last. What did I write? <laughs> With our guest. The guest always ends, right? Not yeah. always. Sometimes. Yeah. It changes constantly, not and not sometimes. for any particular reason. Um... <clears throat> I'm gonna say it one more time. Vibe. <laughs> you ruined it. It was gonna be 15. <laughs> it's okay. Um, oh no, I lost it. Okay. This album is very good. Like, 
uh, none of the songs on it are bad. Some of them are better than others, but like overall, like I enjoy the whole thing. So, and then the vibe, sixteen is on point. Like it's it's spring, obviously. Mm -hmm. I've it's just very well done. So I gave this album five out of five. Really, a, perf wow. a perfect score. Perfect score. Yep. So the only other one, uh, and you gave Maple Leaf five out of five, right? So wow, so wow. you like it as much as Maple Leaf? I respect that actually. I don't. That's crazy. I disagree with you, Caleb. But uh... <laughs> I don't respect. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's hear your uh, final thoughts, Michael. Okay, uh, my final thoughts is I feel like Weezer is definitely the type of group to call the world Mother Earth after listening to this. <laughs> um, it did have a very like great spring vibe to it. But it feels like a spring that I've never experienced before. You know? Like, it feels like I'm, like, trapped in the woods <laughs> <laughs> experiencing spring um, with some, like, sometimes good music and sometimes really subpar music. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it felt, like, a little bit almost new agey to me. But um, only, like, half and half. Like, half the songs I felt were, like, a really good representation of spring. The other half were, like, iffy to me. Okay. But I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Fair well, enough. I think that's what most of your song ratings were. Yeah, that's probably well, the average of all your I think ratings. I stopped reading them halfway through. Most of them were in the 3 point somethings. Okay. That makes sense. Um, the only one that made it into the 4s was Angels on Vacation. What was your favorite song? Angels on Vacation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, well, thank you, Michael, for being here, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in for another episode of WeezeCast. See you in the summer. <laughs>